back for Scene Collectors Volume 7. Hello, everybody. It's good to see you this evening. Thanks for joining us again. See everybody popping in chat already. Uh, Dankabis Kind, Skunk Apes Glassworks, Sammy Sizz 81, John Anon, Thai Guy Grows High. That was a fun one to say. Uh, Sodak Meg Grower, South, oh, South Dakota. That's what I'm guessing there. Sodak. It's like so cat southern dude. california yeah that's it dave knows everybody that's the thing here <laughs> dave knows everybody and dave actually brought someone to the show this week he brought us james w he said chad this guy has been the bane of my existence he bids on all the packs that i want to bid on we go back and forth I want to see this guy's face so I can give him the fi no, he didn't really say that, but uh, <laughs> so we really are going Jerry Springer, is what you're saying. <laughs> yes, I mean, I made a promise to go Jerry Springer because in reality, these two do know each other through the auctions. I don't know, James, do you maybe want to say hello, introduce yourself, and kind of give a little backstory to that one? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Um, so I my name is James Wells. Um, I am one of the co founders of Joint Cannabis and Cultivation. Um, everything is based for us out of kind of the Metro Detroit area. Um, and yeah, I mean, Dave and I met a couple of years ago because we were one upping each other like mad on a charity. I think it was one of the many charity auctions for, for Nick, for, uh, Lime Rising Farms. Yep. And yeah, we just, we were, we were kind of breaking the bank to be honest and having a riot doing it. And so from then on, we were just like, look, you know, we need to. We need to share the love and <laughs> not do that again. So, <laughs> right. so ever since, man, it's been a it's been a match made in heaven. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. You, you know, you gotta you gotta stop, collaborate, and listen. Oh, that's right. Okay. Bad music pun number one of the evening. Uh, there will be more, but uh, yeah, no, that, that's kind of cool that it was for the charity auction too. You know, sometimes it is great to see those kind of you know go progressively higher. Uh, as somebody who watches them, as somebody you know who supports the cause, uh, you know, it, it's fun for us to be living vicariously through you guys sometimes. <laughs> And uh, Dave, you've already got a brand new table laid out for us this evening. So maybe do you want to give us a little backstory, too, about uh, coming across James and maybe uh, how you guys became friends instead of uh, frenemies? Well, like you said, we had many, many a battle, uh, you know, one upping each other for, for auctions back, back a couple of years ago. But my first real encounter with him was he had actually uh, donated because he's donated countless times to so many auctions this is a an oh, absolute right. gentleman an absolute yeah. gentleman and my first real encounter with him other than seeing a, hey this is just a guy i gotta look out for was <laughs> he donated for seattle chronic seeds mm -hmm. and cool. just helping him out and he ended up sending me some stuff and that kind of got us talking to each other outside of you know bidding against each other and turned out he's a pretty pretty cool dude you know a, a guy who just uh, kind of what I wanted to bring up tonight was there's been a lot of people that I've noticed in the community who have been ex like just extremely generous, extremely friendly, like people that are so willing to share their their prizes with you. And, and just there's just a lot of great people. That's kind of what's on the table here right now. Uh, you've got some some lovely stuff here from uh, the American one. His yes. Aces, nice. Godiva, Ophelia, blueberry cheesecake, cheesequake. Nice. And those, uh, you know, have have been tested. Oh, not me. Geez, come on now. Nobody wants to see that. Uh, oh, that's right, because I had the the American one sticker in my hand. I'm like, yeah, there you it. go. Um, but that one, you know, he's gotten those all over the world now and it's been cool to see some of the grows and the the blueberry times cheese quake in particular was fun to hear a lot of the uk guys saying oh. dude this is like the uk cheese yeah it's the stinky stuff and i'm just like what, really yeah so that's yeah. cool now have you have you had the chance to uh pop any of the american ones gear i before? would i wish i could say that i have i have yet to uh, yeah. Honestly, everyone up here, I've yet to pop their stuff. I'm kind of a, a shitty friend in that regard, but they're uh, they're 
in the works. So I definitely plan on it one day. Well, James, James and I were kind of talking about that beforehand. And, you know, you must have been on our wavelength because the table you spread out and kind of the reason you did it. But just the generosity of people in the community is pretty awesome. 100%. Um, you know, yeah. it's 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 easy to if you're someone in need to find good beans from somebody and, you know, even just as a friendly gesture, you know, um, I'll just shout out Kazoo, uh, Kazoo Kush as one person in particular who that Definitely. guy has just hooked me the F up, man. <laughs> never, you know, never said, yo, dude, give me the give me all you got. He's just like, you want you want a couple seeds? Sure. <laughs> Guys, making it rain over here. So, yeah, community's been pretty generous, and I think that's really awesome. And that's something that we try to to do and spread as well. Again, both of you guys donating to these auctions, so that's pretty badass. But sometimes when we do good things, we regret it a little. So, what is one pack that you guys have put into an auction or a donation that a little bit later you're just like, damn. I wish I grabbed something else. Um, you know that's a that's a really tough question to be honest. Um, you know I I feel like I've been paid back so well in in so many ways by good people that I I'm more happy to I, like I'm happier to give out the stuff than I am sometimes even to to you know to to worry about it. You know I mean. Like, uh, you know, if I had to pick something, I mean, I know I've thrown around some, like, uh, some really early stock Josh D.O.G. from Karma that that uh, eh, that, <laughs> that I may have wanted back. But, like, otherwise, I mean, you know, you get so many, you, you get so many amazing things from other people and they're, you know, they, they want to help out too. And especially if you are doing a good deed for somebody, like, you know, they're, they're all about, you know, giving, giving something back. So, I mean, but that Josh D is something that I will, you know, about, about a 30 pack of those kind of, kind of hurt, but I, I, I have enough still. So we're good. <laughs> right. And you know, no, no regrets, but I asked, I'm like, if you had to pick one, so yeah, if, I, if I had to pick one, you know, but at the same time, what is great about the love on, on, you know, this community is so many people are just like, dude, just let me know and I'll send you a cut of what of the best thing I find. Like I got no issues doing it and I'm happy to do it. And I pretty much do the same thing is like, we have that deal with a lot of people where like, if we find something, you know, I have that, I have that with Dave is like, if I find something special out of, you know, I got a really big collection of Bodie stuff. And if I find a bunch of his gear and there's some special stuff in it, you know, Dave's going to get some, you know, it's just, it's just going to happen. Nice. That's, that's rad, man. And Dave, I'll, you know, I want to throw it to you too. Cause I know you have definitely, and you know, you, you're, you're silent about it. You don't advertise it, but good people do good things without anybody needing to know about it. But I'm going to call you out on it tonight because you, you give uh, to some of these auctions and some of these charity fundraisers that we do uh, very much appreciated. But what is maybe something that you accidentally set in the wrong pile? <laughs> 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 well, I can think of something right off the top of my head uh, that I I don't regret giving it up, but yeah, I, I guess I kind of do. Uh, the Girl Scout Cookies Coca Cola Root Beer from uh, Live Rising that's that's something that I uh, had recently given out, but I, I gave it out right back to, to to the creator, so it's all good. Um, nice. There you go. What the hell else am I thinking of? Oh, eight. HP 13 and root beer. I, I, I that was one that I, I let out and I kind of regret letting some of those out because there were only 20 of them. And yeah, but hey, it's all good. You know, I'm happy to see that the person who I gave them to, they are going to grow them. So yeah. nice. And that is, you know, kind of a factor too is it's great to have a lot of this variety. Um, it's great to have a lot of these rare or, you know, rarer things that. It's not mass production. It's, you know, it's that special like foil baseball card in the pack you get out yeah. of like one, one per box or something. Um, but we can't possibly pop them all, even though we try. So it is nice to, to give some of those gems away to people that, you know, are going to grow them. Definitely. And, 100%, 100%. 
Yeah, and, you know, what? also just knowing that it makes their day, man. I mean, some guys will come back to me after I've given them a pack of something that they were really looking for. And they're just like, oh, my God, man, I am so pumped. Like, this has been one of the best grows I have out there. And I'm just sitting back there like, yes, I'm totally. glad I could do something good for you. <laughs> totally. It's fun, man. It's yeah. it's fun seeing others happy and succeed, too. 100%. And if they live close enough, you get to smoke it. So that's there always you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Have local friends. Local local charities. That's that's the way to go. <laughs> local charities. Well, I guess you know I want to start it off tonight, uh, and this is you know this is this is coming from Dave. So I'm gonna pretend like he's never had these, and it's all mine. But actually, you know, little confession: this is my first. Freeborn Selections pack that I've ever had, which is kind of crazy, all things considered. So I'm really stoked because, you know, Mean Gene uh, Jackson, he is legit. Um, you know, he this is uh, the Runt times the G33 Cherry Limeade. So when he says it's the Runts, um, I'm going to assume that it is the right runs. <laughs> it's a good one that he's grown it out, that he's verified it. And he's like, yeah, that's the runs. Uh, I'm excited about that. And then also the other thing is the G33 times cherry limeade is the stud mail that Dave just can't stop raving about. So I, I, anything that's touched that I've grown, especially that, that runch that you did, what you have there, love growing that. What a what a turf monster! Just absolutely stinky. And she surprised me too because she was kind of the run to the garden. I wasn't really expecting much out of her, but then boom, in flower, turned everything around. Just knocked everything, every other plant in the tent out of the park. Nice. Now, now, what should I what should I kind of expect as far as growing this out? You know, runts. Uh, I haven't grown it myself, but I've heard that it can be kind of a bitch to grow out. Little uh, picky, a little bit, <laughs> but. With that, with that influence, and granted, I mean, if we want to get over technical, there's phenotypic variation, and we might not see the same thing from every seed. Let's just skip over that and have some fun tonight. Um, what, what, you know, should I kind of expect to to see out of this batch? Because I'll probably, I'll probably pop half of them uh, right away, and then you know, we're 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 the two seed keepers. Always keep back two seeds just in case. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I definitely found her to be a little on the picky side. But if you treat her right, she treats you right. Okay. And is it like picky as in watering or is it picky as in like fertilization? It needs more or it needs less or just all around picky? I found, because I do run more of the organic style. So I found it, it, it was maybe I had a little too much going on in there for. Okay. Okay. But other than that, that, that was the only issues I seem to find is that she, uh, she didn't really like that initial shock of going into my, uh, my soil treatment, my soil blend. Okay. Maybe it was like too hot. Did you just pop it straight from seed and put it in there or did you get it a uh, clone or a little bit of roots before you put it into your beds? I, I pop it uh, on the side and then I throw them in there a little later. I wish I could say that they were full living soil beds. They're not quite. <laughs> right. I wish well. I could get there. Yeah. Well, I'm using, you know, I use the, that Soham living soil, uh, which Good is, stuff. it's a bag soil. It's yep. a water only, but it is a little hot. So, you know, I have, they told me not to put my clones directly into it, but I do. And there's been a couple of times where I'm just like, Ooh, you got a little, <laughs> a little extra juice. A little spicy. Yeah. But everything else has worked fine since then. And James, it looked like you may have had some experience growing the runs out before. Uh, yeah, I, I have. Um, I, I so my my growing par partner in in crime is uh, he's had he's it's a finicky little plant with with runs. Um, but really, I mean, the gem out of that is that cherry limeade. Uh, I have I have crosses of that cherry limeade to um, to to mendo breath to um a few other really unique uh uh cuts and that cherry limeade is there's something really special about it it's it is it is so there it is so terpy and so beautiful smelling 
And at the same time, it's not quite as loud and crazy as sometimes when you were throwing, like, I, I know this is your first Freeborn stuff, but maybe, uh, I don't know if Dave, if you've ever run like the, the, the Lime Pop stuff, but the Lime Pop stuff from, from him could get a little overwhelming in the cross, whereas the Cherry Limeade, I feel like just meshes beautifully with, with almost like anything you throw with it. So I think you'll be really, really happy. Yes. <laughs> and actually that that mendo breath cherry limeade you're talking about you actually uh gave me some oh yes i did that's uh, right because you're that's... a wonderful man that's <laughs> I, I am a fan of the mendo breath i do like that you know that has a bit more of like a, a gassier profile than yep. kind of what it sounds like we're describing here but if the two you know if it worked well half and half you get the yeah. new flavor if, yeah the world oh, that would be beautiful it's good stuff it's good stuff i'm excited i'm excited to even more excited to grow those out now i'm a little bit giddy because terps are my jam nice yeah what uh what kind of profile do you typically look for james i know um, dave's dave's a little more of a gas guy i am a, i am definitely a gas hound too I'm gonna be honest. Like I, I love, I love the chems, the diesels, the, uh, um, you know, my my wife and I were out in, um, lived out in Boston for for several years, and um, just got introduced to a lot of that really just the original throwback gear that that just makes, oh, it, it's like it's just fuel on the nose, and man, when you smoke it, it's it's just perfect. So I am definitely in the same. The same mindset, um, you know, I have a couple of, um, we're, we're, we're actually going to be doing a, a pretty big hunt of some um, I-95 work here that's going to be really quite interesting that um, a good buddy of mine uh, has been, uh, I mean, he, he works some incredible um, lines off of this uh, and has, has, you know, shared it with a number of different people and has been really successful with it. Um, so we're going to do a big project hunting all that. Um, and I-95, obviously very gassy, full of, you know, full of everything, sour gas, chem that you can imagine. Um, a uh, uh, kind of a cool thing to throw in there, looking at a throwback here, thinking of, um, of Lucky Dog for a second, the Skunk VA himself, is um, I actually have some of the original... Um, silver chem s ones um there oh, we go wow. um and then also the uh silver chem crush that he put out i think it was like 2016 at the emerald cup wow. and um i mean these were just kind of his babies the chem crush and the silver chem were two that um you know, were really, really early stuff um, that, you know, came from a, the chem crush I know came from a really early, may have been the original uh, SFVOG cut. And um, the the silver chem, if you go back and take a look at some of the photos of it, uh, it's it's just like, it's it's such a beautiful plant, man. It's, it's really, really awesome. So, I mean, again, this is where the community came in and did something really, you know, was really nice and, you know, was able to uh, make a cool trade with a friend and, and uh, he was able to hook me up with it. So um, we'll, we'll definitely be exploring those as time goes on. That is rad. And, you know, I've had, um, I'm actually growing his twin peaks right now. Uh, Skunk VA. That's stuff. The, I got a pack of that right here as well. Nice. And that, you know, again, we we're talking earlier about the, you know, the beauty of the community. Uh, I was on a show kind of like this and we we're just talking and a person watching heard me talking about, you know, chem. I love chem 91, like pre chem 91, 91. Mm -hmm. I love that in my top strains. And he's a seed collector as well. He's actually on, I think it was episode two, episode two or three. Uh, we brought him in. Um, but he's, he said, hey, uh, I think this pack belongs to you. It's a it's Twin Peaks, which is kind of the, you know, I'm doing the Twin Peaks cannabis thing. Yeah. Uh, he's like, it's it's the Chem 91 times Chem Sis. Yeah. Uh, I think it belongs to you. What's Where can I send it? And I was nice, just like, man. holy shit. Nice. Never met him before. I mean, since then, you know, obviously, cool dude. We've had good conversations. He's been a guest on this show. 
But when it comes to the chem family, Skunk VA is pretty much the the last word, the the authority. I don't know what 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 would you guys say there? Yeah, I I, I think you're, <laughs> I think you got it, man. He's he's the man that's that's been you know running the chems forever. Um, you know the the other you know the other chem that was a great great old chem that some people may remember was the old insane seed posse. Uh, 91 chem that he did that or that they did that was just I mean that was that was like uh, that was like putting up a, a freaking gas flamethrower to your nose and you're just like <laughs> okay all right we get it it's it's there but there, there's nothing better than skunk VA's work as far as he's, he's the authority on it and, um, for good reason he's put a lot of time into you know just those strains. And I think that is so cool that he has his niche and he works away at it yeah. and continues to find, you know, different ways of, of, you know, while keeping the, the tradition alive with it is adding a few new elements to it and just continuing to let it evolve. Yeah. He's, he's pulled some good stuff out of there and it's, it is kind of good to hear that. Cause again, going back to, you know, the, the freeborn selections, when he says it's run I, I, I know it's runs. Yes. Uh, when you're looking for a chem, whether it be, you know, chem 91, chem D, chem four. Um, when you go to Lucky Dog Seco, Skunk VA, you know, that's what it really is. And so that's a great place to just build a solid foundation. I mean, obviously he's built a, a legacy, a brand off of it. 100%. Yeah. So that's exciting. Dave, what, what do you have that might be fuel? in that little pile right there <laughs> since you love the fuel i'm gonna run and turn off my dehumidifier too real quick guys i'm sorry it's making me so freaking hot right now i see i see some dog uh, the dog father up there is that i'll make i'll make you big here and then i'll go turn my thing <laughs> off oh yeah dog father my camera there you screen. go man got the local d which is local skunk i tray and top Beautiful. dog sour diesel bx3 i love all the work that this guy did all, all, he took some top-notch people, mix them, mix them together. Yes, the absolutely. dog father. Burnout cam. Oh, that is that is one heck of a cross right snow. there, man. Alien vintage blueberry. Yellow snow. <laughs> That's a new one. <laughs> Highway robbery. One tree. Throwing, throwing oh, three summer. awesome. You can't go wrong there. <laughs> absolutely. So where I don't, I'm not familiar with the dog father. Where he's, uh, he's Michigan he's, based. Okay. Michigan based. Um, yeah, and they he does he does some he, he's he seems like he's and correct me if I'm wrong, Dave, but I think primarily does a lot of, of the diesels and the chems and you know and 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 you know it kind of goes off that track with with uh um but it's always kind of staying around like the karma sour diesels and the um the various chems and stuff out there. You are a hundred percent right. That is what he loves to play with. And yeah. they're all right up my alley. They're all right up your alley. Yep. You just can't go wrong with anything that he works with. Uh, I've no. been very, I, I started out as just a trade with him. I was like, Hey, yeah, I'll, I'll send you some seeds. He wanted to send me some seeds and boom, I, I happened to see what they all were. And I was like, Oh shit. You, you put some killers together, man. Very nice. Now what, you know, it's interesting because we'll, we'll talk about, we're talking about like the gas smell. We're talking about the fuel and you know, we're looking at five different packs. You had a pack. I had a different pack. What, what are some of like the nuances that you guys like to find? Or like, have you found any like nuances that distinguish one breeders, maybe gas over another? Cause there's, there's a lot of descriptive words out there. Gas is like the catch all, but then you've got, you know, the tennis ball, you got the burnt rubber, uh, the, the kerosene. New shoe leather. <laughs> New yeah. shoe leather. Yeah. What, what are some of the fun? Uh, <laughs> there's uh, so many different crazy things out there to describe the different kind of profiles you'll get from, from a lot of these gases. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't say that I, my nose is uh, as discerning as some of uh, maybe like a, uh, mean gene and being able to no. work with his Crayola box. Uh, of, of, <laughs> yeah, of right. There. I, I've right. got the, uh, the the eight pack. He's got the sixty four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's no, that's totally true, man. And it's it's um like I mean some you know like I, I always found that a lot of like the true 
the true, true original diesel, for example, just always the, the first thing that came to mind was fuel was just like a big hit of fuel off that plant. And it just, it just smelled like, like if you, if you literally just put a gas gasoline in your car or something, or just sprayed some gasoline, that's what it smells like. Like it, it just has this very unique characteristic to it that, um, just every time I smell it, I'm like, oh, that's gotta be, that's gotta come from an original, original diesel. Cause it just has that, that nose that's quite unique to most of the other diesel plants that, that uh, you find. So that would be maybe one that I would, I would throw out there. Now sour, you know, sour kind of falls into, I don't know. It, it seems to be like, if you like the gas, you like the diesel, you also like the sour. So where, where does like sour kind of play into this? Some of the sour diesels, um, you're still hitting that gas note or are you really getting more of a like tangy sourness to it in the end? Yeah. Some of them do tend to lean more towards that citrus kind of sour tang yep. flavor. As yep. opposed to just being pure gasoline or diesel or kerosene or whatever kind of fuel you want to say it's, it smells like. There are subtle differences between them, definitely. But in my experience, a lot of those, the, the, the best sour I ever had that was slightly tangy while still carrying so much fuel and pungency <laughs> to it. I, I tell you, man, I'm, I'm chasing that. Every every sour or diesel cut or, or thing I pop is I am trying to mimic that flavor I had 20 plus years ago, man. Yeah, still wait, still wait, <laughs> still wait. Uh, well, I wish you luck. <laughs> I hope you find that because when you do, I'll be like, "Hey, bro, what's up?" No, I'm just joking. Yeah. Hey, I will share. I will share. I know, I know. I, I know that that uh, Top Dog had had said that, like, and people had agreed that the you know the BX the the triple back cross that he did was. Um, was was pretty overwhelming on the on the sour funk um, and was was kind of blowing your nose off a little bit. Whereas the the I I have not run the BX4 yet. I have several packs of it um, that I'm kind of waiting to to work through. Um, but that one from from him says that that you know it is the closest thing that he has had to kind of the original to capturing that sort of original essence of the of the sour diesel so i'm really curious to see what what uh what comes of that as i said i have not grown it per se uh this is just what i have um heard from from him and from um a few other people who have grown it and have a have a great great uh, uh palette for for this kind of stuff so um I, it'll be interesting to see how it how it rates to like the 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 bat, you know double back cross and and the the triple and stuff. So I'm excited to see. It. I hope you get it. I, I hope it's delicious and everything that you want it to be because I want it so bad. <laughs> <laughs> No, I see, and 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 I am reading chat to you guys. I'm starring some of these questions so I can bring them up a little bit later. Um, so far, nothing uh, we've covered has been on Daga, or actually the Amy Aces oh, the from Amy the American Aces, yeah, the Amy, Amy Aces. Aces. That one's available on Daga right now, um, but we'll we'll try to call them out when they are available on there. Uh, let's see here. We had any older packs pre two K. Yeah, man, I got I got a good one actually to throw up here. That'll be kind of fun. Um, do it, do it, do it. So this is this was actually um, it's it's called it Oops. was no oh, that's okay. It's, <laughs> it's actually called French Connection. Oh wow! And wow. this was a roundtable selection, but really this was a this was just an old school NorCal collaboration of Woodman Canyon Sour Diesel seventy eight Pakistani cross to the chem special reserve Whoa, and now buddy. this this may or may not be it, it's close to pre-2000 it may not be quite there but um this is those are the parents of some of like the strains of today that we see like oil spill for example came from i i know that that the uh the woodman canyon sour was was a part of that that oil spill combo so i mean mm. that's a pack where like it's got some it's got some heritage to it and it was it was really cool to come across yeah, that, that is good, that's some good stuff there <laughs> that's that's yeah, I mean, good stuff 78 pakistani or the 86 hindu i mean those two cuts are are about as 
I mean, other than like Big Red, for example, the Big Red Afghani up there in NorCal, uh, which is guarded like like Fort Knox. Uh, <laughs> um, it's you know th those that's a that's a cool a cool cross there um, that was you know that's that I've I've you know now been holding on to for a little while, but was from a, a very good friend of mine, and um, I mean that's a that's got some got some history to it for sure. Are those things that you could actually find in seed form or is like the fabled one a cut that's going uh, around? Uh, so th these, this is seed form. Um, but those, I don't even think I, I, you know, you'd have to, you'd have to ask like the, <laughs> the, the, the old, old dudes, if they have any of that and they're not giving it out. So I would say, um, you know, you pick your winner out of, out of a pack of, let me see, there's probably like, I mean, they're big seeds too. They're probably like uh, 10, 12 in there and you, oh boy. you know, see, see what you get out of them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Those, yeah. The, the Northern California Hills has a lot, uh, a lot yeah. of history. That's... Yeah. And they're not letting it out anytime soon. So. No. And that's, you know, that's an interesting thing. Well, you know, we definitely want to show off some more seeds here. We will. Um, but we were, we were also talking earlier about how some of these rarer seeds are really what can lead to craft cannabis and like the success of a craft cannabis yep. business. Um, something, you know, I'd love to do. I think, you know, probably both of you guys would like to do. James, you're actually in the process of doing it. Yep. Um, but it's like the old days, you, you know, when the OG, you know, the Kush, it was guarded so tight because, well, that's what brought everybody to you. Yeah. So it didn't get out. And it's kind of, I don't know, how do you see some of these collector seeds playing into that as far as like benefiting the craft grower, but at the same time, not necessarily getting out to the public because that's what keeps it out of the hands of Perner, um, <laughs> mainstream cannabis. Um. I mean, I, I think that really one of the best things that you can do is, um, you know, you, you have your community of people, the people that you trust, people that, that you say, hey, man, this is, you know, I'm giving this to you. You know, I, I trust that you'll respect that it's not, you know, you can you can go ahead and cross it and put it into what, you know, put it into something for yourself. And for, you know, if you if you find something that's really unique and a cross that you make with with it. That's one thing, um, but I, I think it's really important that it comes out in in the right way without being, um, without as you said, being just rolled up into a big portfolio of one of these big cannabis companies um, who can, you know, offer up X amount of money basically for whatever they want. And I, you know, I think though one of the things that this this community really does well is. Yeah, of course, everyone wants to get, you know, everyone would love to have a million dollars on the table and whatever else. And that's great and all. But I see a lot of respect and I see a lot of people who hold this plant too dear to be like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to give this up all, you know, this hard work or these seeds that I have, you know, held on to preciously. Um, and I, I'm not I'm not going to give that up simply because somebody puts a check in front of my face. I care right. too much about it. Um, so I but at the same time. You know, it is really important to find certain crosses and stuff that we can get out there to help consumers and patients alike. Um, I, you know, that's one of our biggest things is, you know, our head grower is somebody who is one of the one of the single best grower breeders in, in the world that I've ever seen. And his work is he, he is bringing all new work to our marketplace. And that's a huge part of who we are as a company because we want to be able to match the profiles that work for our consumers and patients. We are working for them at the end of the day and we wanna make sure that they are getting what they need. Um, and we will go to the ends of the earth to do that. And that's exactly what craft cannabis is all about is putting in 24 hours a day making sure everything is locked down and is taken care of as well as possible. And, and we are using the genetics that, that have been heirloomed and passed down and um, are really, you know, you're not just going to find in a, a seed bank or something like that. Um, it's, it's really important to make sure that these get out there to people and are grown in a way that are going to allow those terpenes and cannabinoid profiles 
to really hit the market and allow people to really get back to enjoying cannabis flower rather than going to a dispensary and just getting frustrated because they're like, look, th this, this stuff isn't doing it for me. It's crappy. I can go down the street to my buddy and get better stuff. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, just simply put. Good to hear, man. And, you know, people, uh, people are definitely supporting that. Well said, James Barr. Something we like to say around here on this channel is we're dropping gold bars. So, nice. Burn, Show, Burn Show knows what's going on. We're <laughs> dropping some bars. But, uh, you know, it, it's true. Like, I, I enjoy my flower. Um, and, you know, again, nothing against concentrates or people who dab, but, I'm hesitant sometimes to give people my flower because I know that they're primarily interested in dabbing. Oh. And it's like, I could give this to them, but is any one of them ever going to be like, whoa, man, that was super powerful. It knocked me on my ass. Yeah. Sure, they may enjoy it, but it's a little bit different. I, I enjoy much more giving it to medicinal patients, trying to unlock that key, kind of like you're saying. Absolutely. Um, trying some of these more, you know, exotic uh, Zaza type strains, they have different cannabinoid ratios. They have different terpenes and who yep. knows, one of them just might be the key for somebody's endocannabinoid system. So that is another bonus about being a collector, about having Absolutely. some of the rare things. Uh, yep. if, if, if you're orientated or if your goal is kind of, you know, healing, it's fuck, dude. I'd rather have, you know, the big box of Crayolas. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. They'll, they'll always be uh, a niche for that rare, uh, cool, exotic strain that's out there for the the, the, the people who want that. Uh, like, there'll always be a market for it. Maybe a small market. It's not going to be the right. burner market, but there's always <laughs> going to be a market for people who are the best of the best and the rare yeah. of the rare. Yeah. And, and craft too. craft isn't going to be able to supply the, you know, nope. that large of a market. You just can't nope. do it. So it's, yeah, it's, it's cool nope. if you're able to build your niche there, basically. Yeah, you're just going to carve out your niche basically. And you're going to, you you know, you're going to make that work and not, you know, not interested in building an empire, you know, interested in building a legacy brand is the, is the difference there. Um, and just having people know that, Hey, when they see our logo on something, the reason it's, it, you know, the reason it's put in that store is because it is the best of the best. And we're not going to let it, we're not going to let it out of our facility unless it is yeah. simple as that. Integrity is a good thing to have. Yep. And, yes, sir. <laughs> and there seems to be a lot more people than we may have think in this industry with it. So that's always a plus. Absolutely. I'm meeting new people daily. So it's, it's yeah, I mean, to be honest, one guy that we, that, that, uh, uh, Dave brought up just, just a, at the start of our, our session here um, that does some amazing work for those who are sitting watching this or may watch it later um, and are looking for that more unique uh, cannabinoid, you know, work out there is none other than Seattle chronic. And yeah. his stuff is, he is doing leaps and bounds work for all sorts Shame. of CBD, CBG, one-to-one -one ratios of things. Um, and also just honestly, one of the nicest people in this community, bar none, and works his butt off. So you know that what you're getting from him is is the real deal. And and it's, it's I, I can tell you that as somebody who is I, I have a chronic neuromuscular disease, so I am somebody that is always looking for what strains going to work for me, you know, which ones aren't. And, you know, his stuff is is one of those that always kind of, whenever I come across his flower, it's it's something that, that does work for me. So I, um, you know, I have a huge, huge amount of respect for him and, and all that he does for sure. Yeah, he, he's been a cool dude. I've seen him a lot uh, here on the Future Cannabis Project mm -hmm. channel. He was actually on episode five. Uh, I oh. believe it was episode five of the Seed Collectors. Nice. Um, yeah, it was nice. It was a kind of quick. He, he was uh, just coming back from working all day and, and the phone died on us. But Dave had actually pulled out a bunch of Seattle Chronic Seeds for oh, that nice. show. So, you know, Dave, Dave. I, I just say we're, we're Bartles and James, man. The show doesn't happen without, <laughs> without the other. So yeah, Dave, Dave came to the rescue there. That was pretty awesome. That's great. 
Yeah. And I want to hear from you, Dave. You're, you're quiet as usual tonight. Show us something, oh, buddy. <laughs> Tell us a story. <laughs> Oh, see, there you oh, go. Oh, there we go. What, what do we get? Oh, the, that's good stuff. The Boz. Okay, so Brian Bosworth. I lived in Seattle during the Boz craze. Brian <laughs> Bosworth. Fucking awesome. He's got, the, he's got the Bickett and the Melvins, man. That's good stuff. I got a couple packs of that myself from him, and it's it's, it's good. You know, Two I actually hitters together combined. Sorry, sorry, there's nothing. Yeah, no, I asked you to talk and then I talked over you. So please go ahead. <laughs> I tell you though, uh, the the Bicket, I absolutely love that cut. It is one of the nastiest, funkiest cuts you could ever come across. Just a great washer. I I do have I do not I'm not a big fan of taking her 14, you know, 13, 14 weeks, but hey, that's yeah. it's worth it. Totally worth it. Uh, but the Melvins, what a dumper that Melvins is. Yeah. I love that cut. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's something that uh, on one of the last shows, um, he was saying there was a, because I'm in Washington, and so was he. His genetics are here, and there's one company here that's selling the Melvins. And so I actually went into a store last week. My wife wanted to get a cart, and uh, I saw it there. And I was so tempted. Like I wanted to try the Melvins, but I just, I knew I was familiar with the company that grew it. Mm. Uh, and I was, mm, eh. yeah, passed. I passed on it because I don't want to, again, that's like the runts though from earlier, you know, in the show, it's like, I've never grown it myself. I don't know anybody in this area personally that has grown it themselves. I, the real one. Okay. We'll just put that out there. The real one. Uh, so when I go to the, the rec store and I've tried the runs, I've never been impressed, but I know that I do not have a good representation of it. So that's mm -hmm. another reason why I was kind of like, ah, I do want to try this Melvin's and support that work, but I don't want to be disappointed at the same time, not because of the strain. Yep. <sighs> Shooter, of course you're from Washington, buddy. You actually, yeah, you're by one of the old stores I used to work at. Runts was sponsored by rappers too. Yeah, Runts, Runts was, Runts was a popular one. Um, and and now was it because of the turp profile or was it because it was a good washer? Because it sure doesn't really yield and it doesn't grow very easily, from what I hear. So I'd say more the turf profile than anything. And, and also, it was the marketing behind Runts that really got it going. I mean, Runts, Runts became its own company. You know, I mean, it was really taken off by a bunch of marketers who were able to, to establish a, a – don't get me wrong. They, they, there are some really quality cuts of Runts out there. The Pink Runts is, is one that um, a friend of mine is particularly big on and has, a, a, you know, an original cut and loves it. But um, – you know, it was something that was a little bit more marketing based um, than being, you know, and, and then, but then, you know, you see like if, if, if Mean Gene's going to run it, then it's, there's obviously something there and it right. does, it has a big, bold turp profile to it and, and it can, it can yield a bunch of different phenotypes too. So okay. um, depending on what you have. Um, so you know, it's it's always worth a try, right? I mean, you know, see what happens. Yes, it is. And even with those ones that, you know, I have that say they're runts, but they're from that Spanish seed company. <laughs> I know they're not, but you know what? Roll the dice, man. Hey. It doesn't mean you're not going to get something good. Not you in the least, man. probably will. Uh, I, I had, so the, the ones that we gave, you know, you gave away that you kind of regret. I had one. Uh, it was called a diesel glue from, uh, it was actually here. I use it for a coaster Oh, okay. <laughs> for my coffee, yep. Cannabia. Um, but it was one of those companies, diesel glue. God, could you get any more namey generic than diesel and glue? I didn't have high hopes for it, but I popped it. And as it was growing, it was growing a little bit taller a little bit more internodal length than some of the other things so i kind of was like hey eh, you know you'll make it through this round but i probably won't carry you on just because i'm trying to keep everything you know as even as i can with the variety that i actually grow um and i did a contest on here and i originally had like 10 of those and 
somebody, you know, they answered the trivia question. And I was just like, ah, let's just load them up with stuff. And usually if I've grown something and it doesn't necessarily fit exactly what I'm looking for, if I have more, I'll give those away if I still think it was good. Just because it's not what I'm looking for doesn't mean it's not good. Uh, and so I gave six of those away. I have three left, but I gave six of those away. And when it came time to harvest that thing, I was like, oh, my God. Why did I not take a clone of this? Why did I not, you know, why did I give those away? Oh, like no. it was it was a happy surprise. I, I do not get any sort of diesel out of it. I do not get any sort of glue out of it. But it was a freaking fantastic strain. So that's that's one that I gave away that I was probably like, no, oh, wish I had all of them to go through and see if oh. I could get that exact thing back. Always be cloning. Always, always be always cloning, be cloning. Dude, ABC I, man. I ABC usually, oh, <laughs> I, I'm 99% on that. That is like one of probably two that I haven't like automatically cloned. But what, what are <laughs> maybe what are one of the uh breeders or packs that each of you could pull out from somebody that we probably don't know that we probably haven't heard of yet? And can you maybe tell us a little bit about that breeder or? you know, that strain and maybe why it, why you chose it or how it came to you. Uh, Cause again, we want to represent, you know, everybody that yeah. we can. And it's such a big community that there's some all-stars out there that we've never heard of. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, you know, to be honest, um, I, I, I know that I, I'm pretty sure Dave knows, knows who, who he is, but um, for the most part, he's somebody that really kind of sticks to himself um, and, truly makes some of the best uh, um, genetics out there. And really the only times you find them is he's so generous when it comes to charity auctions. That's when he really puts his stuff in there. And that is Melting Pot Farms. Mm -hmm. um, and um, Melty is, is just one of, one of the best guys out there. Um, his, this is, this is a, a 50 plus pack right here oh, of his coastal collision, which is um, just, uh, it's Ooh. one of the best strains that I've, I've truly ever grown. Um, it's a solid U cross with a crazy uh, SFV back cross. Um, oh, his stuff is, um, you know, you'll see his stuff on charity auctions and stuff go for an absolute fortune. Um, and then there are times where he's just like, he's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm a week late with this, but I, so I'm going to throw in an extra 30 seeds or something like that. And you're like, oh, okay, thanks, man. Like, like, like you're just a good dude who does, you know, you do your own thing and I, I love it. And I, um, yeah, he, he is not only for being an incredible um, seed breeder, but also for being just such a good person um, and, and really helping a lot of people out there who, who know him. Um, and he, he turns up in a pinch to help people out. And uh, um, so really, again, just a top notch guy. Cool. Well, thank you for sharing that one. And absolutely you know, take note of that. And everybody in chat, you know, again, some of those things we see because we do almost get jaded or like, you know, the, the, for lack of a better term, Instagram readers are a dime a dozen. So it's hard to recognize those gems in the sea of, you know, just like bedazzled genes. Absolutely. Uh, so thanks for pointing that one out. How about you, Dave? What, what, who, what do you have from someone that we might not have heard from? Well, uh, I'm a big fan of someone by the name of two tone out of uh, the Pacific Northwest. He's got some absolutely fire stuff out there. If you ever want to find them on uh, Instagram, it's some of the frostiest plants. They rival some of Seed Junkies plants out there. I'm telling you, it's wow. just absolute fire, the stuff he works with. Really, really hard to get his drops. Really hard. Yeah, not a lot of it. Not a lot of his stuff is ever really released. I only happen to get these from uh, donate, donating to a... Uh, uh, Discord server that he's a big part of, the uh, NW47 Lemon Hoko's Discord server. Yeah, That's okay. Kind of how I got yep. in touch with the, how I found him. Nice. And uh, just uh, everybody would rave about him on there. So you hear you, you hear things, it's like, okay, maybe. Then you see them, it's like, wow, it's okay. I see what everyone's talking about. 
and I, I will pop this stuff eventually. I haven't yet. I, I, I know I'm guilty of that a lot, but uh, in time, in time. It's only, it's only, there's only so much room, man. So You're going to get there, Dave. Started. You're going to get through that list one day. <laughs> one day. <laughs> one, day. <laughs> one day, man. Uh, he, he keeps... uh, yeah, just just throwing it one more up there for people because yeah. I know right now he is he has been selling a whole bunch of absolute fire projects that are just like I I I cannot tell you how much everyone needs to double down on him is if you go to Ozark Nations uh, uh, breeding or uh, IG page it's it's Ozark Nation. Uh, here is one of his that, that he had personally given to me. This was the Mendo Breath Cherry Limeade yeah. um, uh, that I got from him. But right now he has some incredible black lime crosses going. He has the Sky Cuddler Double Kush going. Um, you know, he, he runs a lot of uh, um, he works his own cuts into everything beautifully. And honestly, the, the results from those are I, there's there's some of the best I've ever seen off of any breeder period, um, and I think right now honestly he's charging like like fifty bucks a pack or something. Those are them right there. He's got, uh -oh, he's got going down right there. Nepali. His Kobe. Nepali plant is one of the best plants around for sure. Wow. So the Nepali, um, is that like a short indica leaner or is it a, a tall sativa leaning plant? Nepal. The, the Nepali. The, the Nepali hash plant. It's a Nepali oh. hash plant. Okay. So yeah, I mean, it comes from the same, you know, a lot of the, the a very similar cut to what Bodhi has. Um, his is a bit different. Um, and honestly, ha it, it, it packs on the, the, uh, <laughs> the weight like like no business so um yeah he always sends so much love to people around him too like you know i, I he probably sent half of those as freebies to, to date to be honest so i'm just cracking up over here it's like does it stop i'm sorry to change that's he's just he's just one of the best guys around and i i would thoroughly tell anybody who's like huh what's a reasonably priced pack of seeds out there and he'll also hook you up is definitely ozark so that would be one to write down and and get on over there to to talk to him nice now are you guys familiar with where he sources some of these plants or is he kind of like an older person themselves that may have been holding on to these since uh the glory days so i mean a lot of it is from i mean he's 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 been in the breeding game for a long time he's lived he's lived you know in oregon um he's worked okay. with a lot of you know really really big time breeders um you know he does he's he's very close with mean gene um you know that's where some of those those starter okay. cuts came from but he also has just amassed his own work as as time has gone on um and you know like right now he's got this outstanding mario g that is a that was an irene uh, uh irene kush phenotype that came from a buddy of his down south and i mean it is one of the most beautiful og plants i've ever seen um i got to run it recently and i just i, I fell in love with it so um i mean he he really pulls a lot of winners man that's that's the best way to way to say it is is he's he's just kind of a golden ticket that way <laughs> he's got the he's got the the golden touch there mm -hmm. so what what about it was it that you know you love that made you just kind of in awe was it the morphology was it you it, know something afterwards like the effects or the the profile i mean i think to start with it was just the 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 terpene profile coming off of it um especially like like for example dave right there has that grape soda skunk crossed with cherry limeade that grape soda skunk has some of the most killer terpenes you have ever <laughs> you have ever smelled in your entire life and it the the cannabinoids that came off of it too were really medically healing i was very impressed with um the the grape soda that i have run from him crossed with cherry limeade um i also have had one that's been crossed with um was it crossed with? Was it the, oh, I think it was the Zaz pollen that he had. Um, and so, um, I mean, just like 
absolute turp monsters. He also does some crazy washing strains as well that, that are, um, you know, a couple of those right down there, for example, are, are some awesome washing stuff. Um, so he, he kind of hits all the, all the points. Um, the morphology of the plants are really consistent. Um, and that's something else that I really like is that, that, while, you know, it's not like he endlessly tests, but at the same time, man, they come out like just gorgeous every time. And the germination rate is, I mean, if you're not getting about, you know, he'll throw like 12, 15 seeds in there. If you're not getting like almost every single one of them, except maybe one, he's probably going to throw you another pack. Wow. Like, because he's just, he is that, you know, sure in his craft and his ability. So, um, yeah, I'll. You know, I'll, I'll I'll stop with the paid promotion over here, but, no, no, but, no. but I couldn't help but kind of throw that in there because I know Dave is a big fan of his as well. Yeah, yeah and I, I asked. Go ahead, Dave. Oh, I was just just commenting that I love that guy, and it's funny that uh, we were talking about the grape soda skunk. I actually saw uh, Mean Gene posting earlier today about how he's running the F nines of it right now, mm -hmm. and that he's got he's seeing wonderful things from it. And it's what he's. I think he said he put seventy of them out there. Yeah. That's yep, he did. Wow. So, I mean, uh, that's, and this is the older one of the older versions of the grape soda skunk because I was asking yeah. him about it. Yeah, we could he we could ask his, we could sorry, ask was, Ozark. He, um, I, I think you're right, Dave. I want to say it's like the like a maybe an F like F six or an or an F. You know, I mean, it's 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 definitely older and it's very unique. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I actually, when, when speaking to, to Jackson about it, he uh, he mentioned, he's like, yeah, it's going to be totally different from what I'm working now. Like, what I have now is nothing like that grape soda skunk that, that he was working with. How cool is that, right? Cool. Awesome. It's it's interesting, though, when things change the profile but retain the name. That's something that I'm kind of thinking about or dealing with right now. Um, one, I'm really curious about the terpene profile from that grape soda skunk, because I'm doing a lot of stuff with the Westport's grape juice. Uh, mm. You know, as it's growing, it has just like a super strong, like carnival candy grape to it. Um, yep. As it matures, uh, as it cures, it's creamy. It has like... Oh God, like a creamy wine grape that has a little bit of that like purple grape taste to it. Mm -hmm. It's not as carnival candy as the smell. And then as you exhale, you actually get a little bit of gas on the back end that just wasn't nice. there when you smelled it or on the inhale, but it comes out that way. Uh, and so I'm building a lot of my work off of that. Mm -hmm. What What is the profile of the grape? I so, mean, it's, so it's honest. Honestly, uh, it's it's not it, you know the uh, the couple that I've had are you know fall in line with something similar to that. It is a very it's it's kind of a rich grape soda sort of smelling, um, but it also does have that that skunk in it. There, there's definitely that. Um, uh, it's not overpowering. It's not crazy, um, but it's it's it might kind of be that sort of back end what you're talking about where. <laughs> I love um, it. And it could be something that could really work well with the line that you're talking about. Um, another one that comes to mind that would probably work really nicely with, with that is Dungeon Vault Genetics, like their brandy wine stuff. Okay. Um, I don't know if, you, if you're familiar with, with Dungeon Vault uh, too much, but um, their, their stuff was really like, had that grape juice, um, uh, um, very much like, like a, like a, not not uh, alcoholy, but but like like almost like having a, a gr like a grape juice essentially, right. like a Welch's grape juice. So um, I remember a friend of mine, mm. you know, kept a cut of that because he was so impressed with how unique the smell was. So I mean, you know, that that could be a good way to go with that too, to take the line, you know, a different direction. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting because I, you know, it's like you know craft you want to have something unique something yeah, different yeah. and i'm kind of doing some of the, some of the work with that so when i do hear some of these you know predominant grape strains uh over the last year or two i'm always like so what's the profile on it just to see you know how close we are uh, well i think we're gonna have to get you some grape soda skunk to to cross in there so you'll have to maybe. you'll have to i'll either get it from you or from dave but we'll we'll be sending you some grape soda so that you can you can play around with it a little bit and see what you see what you think hell yeah maybe oh, like that. oh, oh the, uh, there it is yeah 
Wow, Mean Gene from Mendocino. That looks like a. Is that an older pack? No, it's not the gloss. Fresh. Okay. Oh, the the new packs. Okay. I guess it might change every season. Uh, you know, it's funny actually. I should say that the new news look like this. The new news. Can you please give us a historical timeline of the uh, Freeborn Selections packs, Dave? <laughs> Can we just run that one out? <laughs> oh, okay. See, yeah. See, that's what I was thinking. I was. Mm -hmm. I've seen those. I'm hip. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, most of the uh, the Mean Gene old school stuff looks. There you go. Yep. There's, that's there's, that's it right okay, there. Okay. Yeah. Oh man. All right. And yeah. there's, there's there's that boy Ozark right there. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's what lets you know that Ozark was a mean gene tester at some point. Yes. Yep. Yep. He's always he's always been one. So he knows he knows the stuff. If mean gene trusts him, there you go. Right. That is, that's fascinating when you can make those connections and follow that line. Because yeah. again, yeah, it's like if you're a tester of Homeboy and you're, you know, of, of Mean Gene and Mean Gene and you are still friends and you're still doing your thing. And yeah, you know, absolutely. No, fire doesn't play with boof too commonly. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is everyone that. doing here with me? <laughs> you're, dude, yeah. you're El Fuego. What? See, what are you throwing down now? Just some more of Ozark's work. This is his Black Lime Reserve F2 that he uh, he worked Mean Gene, well, Aficionado's Black Lime Reserve. Mm -hmm. How many Black Lime Reserves are there? There's really only the one. There, there's pretty much just the one that's okay. just been it, it's been taken all over the place. The one that you really want to try, though, I'm telling you, because it, it does it stands up shoulders above and in my opinion it's just me but is is you know sending you over some actual the black lime not the black lime reserve i think the black lime reserve falls a little flat to the black lime so mm -hmm. the black lime was 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 a was a mean gene special um that they created the black lime reserve from essentially okay. And so it's kind of like the parent to the Black Lime Reserve. Um, the Black Lime Reserve was a was a phenotype to it, and um, it, it's it's good. Um, I I don't know that, it, but the the Black Lime itself is just it's it's a very very nice plant. I've heard nothing but good things about it, and mm -hmm. when it's that unanimous, there's usually something special. Yeah, <laughs> something something special about it. Yeah, I remember him saying it was uh, it was lime, but it was so dark, it was so purple that it was almost black. It, that's what he wrote on the bag. He called it black lime. So it was just that's was his distinguishing feature is it was so dark versus every other pheno of it, and that's the one that he hit with the Chemdog Special Reserve or Leo's Chemdog Special Reserve. Yeah, and that's Dang what yeah. became the black lime reserve. But like James is saying, uh, the black lime is that's where the the, the flavor is coming from. Yeah. Nice, nice. And again, you guys are both gas guys, but does gas show up in that? Um, I mean, it's it's primarily more along the terpy side. I, I you get a hint of some gassy skunk in it. Uh, like I, I've had it from a couple things, but like it doesn't necessarily sit in there. But it's it's such a special plant, and it's so good tasting, and and um. The smoke just knocks you on your butt. So I, for me, it works out great. I, I'm happy as a clam. <laughs> That's good. And yeah, you know, you, you can't pigeonhole yourself to just one flavor, too. I don't think anybody would do that. We all have our no. preferences. But yeah, you know, that's, again, why my tent is a bunch of variety and not monocrops. Yeah, yeah I, you know, there was the... There was the guy um, uh, who had asked about pre two thousand stuff on there, yeah. and I just pulled something that that definitely fits that. So these are these are from these are the original stock, Mister Nice Neville's Haze and Neville Skunk. What right here? They're in the old uh, uh, the straws. The old straw. Yep, the bent straw wraps, and it's great. Um, yeah, I mean, he, you know, Shanti himself actually was like. He's like, no, 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 that's the original, that's the original stock of this stuff. And wow. so, um, yeah, I got, I got those. And then I got, um, let's see, uh, I got his angel and then his NL five haze. Um, 
uh, uh, original stock, and then those like belong in a museum somewhere. Yeah, I know, right? right? And then uh, skunk haze. <laughs> wow. Super silver haze. Oh wow. And then uh, let's see, what was the last one? Critical skunk. Damn, those are some gems. Yeah, those are some. Yeah. Aged gems right there. That yeah. is awesome. It's cool to cool to go back to something that has such a history. I've never seen those before. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know what? Again, it's a it's it's all about the community. That's that's where those came from. And um, to be honest, at some point, they're probably going to go back to the community somewhere to have somebody be able to actually do like an op for them, and so they can be spread around because. Some of those, like, I would much rather see those in a bunch of people's hands and let them explore and see all the variation and be able to say, hey, I have a piece of these, you know, really unique uh, um, plants that go back, you know, X amount of years. And um, I, I am not a hoarder of, of some of those, like, and especially, you know, to be totally honest, haze plants take a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so sometimes I don't have the I don't have the the patience for some of the hazes. So you know I need to put those in a man, in a person's hand who has a little more patience than I do and let him run it. Yes, speaking of yes. things in your hand, like how are you able to hold those and not get third degree burns? Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> totally. It's got a special oven mitt to handle those. There you but... go. Yeah, the white gloves come out for that. <laughs> Man, those things, yeah, no, those things are special. And you said OP, which for uh, everybody listening, open pollination. Oh, sorry, like, yes. No, you're fine. I followed, um, but just like seed increases. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> we all seem to have not enough room just to run the individuals, but do you ever do your own seed increases? Uh, I, I have not, personally. I, I have never done anything um, like that. I frankly i don't have the, the the green thumb to go through and do all of that as it is um but i know that there are so many capable growers out there that um have the skills and ability to keep those alive and keep them going and so you know i i'd love to have somebody come in and like work with us in our facility and be somebody who's just young and hungry and wants to take you know wants to take on a big project like that and just be like hey man you know here you go you know you do your thing <laughs> you fuck these plan up and we're all coming for you. <laughs> How about that? There you go. No there pressure, you go. That kid. Works no too. pressure. <laughs> pressure creates diamonds. That's true. Yes, it does. Snaps. So I keep seeing kind of like when I think of, you know, some like the older, breed, older breeders, or at least that have been around since I was paying attention. I'm seeing in that upper left hand corner, Brothers Grimm. Uh, yes, from me, Dave. What what are you what are you hiding on a pineapple? So is this like the the pina that we're seeing from like Jackson, or is this a different pineapple? Different. pineapple yeah, this is a pine. This was a very pineapple terp forward uh, version of Cindy ninety nine. That's okay. That's what this is. This is us. But this was another one of those gifts from a friend, a uh, wonderful nice. guy. But then all mixed up. Great dude. Uh, but they, this is uh, just something that he said. I, I told him I, I don't have my uh, Cindy 99. I had some Duke Diamonds, uh, Duke Diamonds Vault uh, Cindy 99 S1s, and mm -hmm. I don't have them anymore. I don't remember what I did with them. I did. <laughs> 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 he's gonna oh jesus i want to be the person that lives in your house next he's gonna be finding <laughs> stuff like behind the fridge and yep oh yep. man pretty much man yeah i i got some i got some great brothers grim stuff that, that they've done over the years of um like the green avenger that they did um which is which just is a is a old old faithful old old stuff um and then like um these were this was F1s of, of his original Grim Dog um, that he did. That honestly, I don't even know the genetics on it, to be honest, but that was uh, an old one. And then, like, I got a couple different Rosetta Stones that he did. Um, and then some Cinderella Double uh, uh, X as well. So uh, you really can't go wrong with his stuff. I've had a couple friends tell me that, that they've been popping a lot of his older gear, and it's been just some absolute gems and this is from people who like 
they, you know, they are, they are super picky about what, what, what they're growing. So, I mean, when you hear gems from them, you're like, okay, you know, you're probably, you're probably onto something. Damn it. Another one to add to the list. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, you know, one thing that I've kind of heard, um, you know, about a lot about his gear is just the uniformity of what you're going to pop. And when you are running a larger room or you are doing it commercial, that's that's the golden ticket. You really kind of demand that in any of the seeds that you see. Um, you got <laughs> you can't can't adjust like every single light in a thousand square foot room just for, <laughs> you know, different phenos. He put so, so much work just into making Cindy 99 itself. Yeah. Just cubing that, cubing Princess, uh, working, what was it, uh, was it Shiva Skunk that he, uh, he put it with? Yes. I can't remember which skunk he put it with, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was. And he just kept working down, selecting towards the Princess, isolating it, and, and getting every Fino to be what you want it to be. You know, so it's uniform, that's what you're looking for. So that's a guy who's definitely put in a lot of work and deserves respect for it. Nice. Definitely. And and now when you mentioned Green Avenger, my, my brain instantly went to this. And then I see the question uh, from Tyler420. Green Avenger is a collab with Subcool TGA because yeah. it was Team Green Avenger is how yep. I knew TGA. So was this really a collab? I, I very well could have been. Honestly, I, I'm not totally sure. Um, we'd have to look it up. I know that uh, I know the plants are really, really nice is, is the only thing that I I used to have a second pack of it. Let a friend pop them and they turned out fantastic. But nice. I, you know, to I, I don't remember if they go back to the, the whole the whole team Green Avenger or not, but I, I would assume they probably do. Um <laughs> Just knowing back in the day, like they were, they were both pretty, both pretty big and and had a lot of compatibility. So I, you know, TGA was pretty compatible with a lot of things. That's why we still see a lot of his gear, you know, being used all the time. Is because it's it's not only is it really good, but it's it's a you know it 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 just works with a lot of different complementary elements. It does. And we had another <laughs> question earlier, BC Bud Baron. Uh, what TGA gear do you have? Um, I actually, I only have a few things with me right now, just the things that I've gotten since the last show. But in, in my arsenal of TGA, um, <clears throat> I have a few of the Jack's Cleaner 2 beans remaining. Uh, I have a few of the Agent Orange beans remaining. And these were both nice. picked up uh between 2011, 2014 in the Washington medical system. I was a patient in, uh, and then, uh, Miranda family farms, who's out on the East coast. He was a distributor for a while of the, the dank stuff. And he sent me, uh, some of his work, uh, as well as uh, dairy queen. So oh, I still, nice. I still have a little dairy queen left. I'm smoking there you go. right now. So those, those were the TGA ones that I've kind of had over the years. And, yeah, I've I've loved them, man. They, the the TGA was kind of like my introduction to um, oh, wow. like terpenes, like yeah. something other than like a G O G S and stuff like that. So yeah, this is the dairy. Oh, finally, it focuses. There we go. So yeah, this is this is the Dairy Queen, and like most of the TGA stuff for me, um, daytime. Like this is usually what I'm going to like in the morning or the afternoon, just mm -hmm. kind of like still go, but change my uh outlook a little bit <laughs> so, yeah those 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 were mine um i don't know have have you guys run any in the past or maybe um, you have uh any of the tga or the dank uh as well dave uh, i i can embarrassingly say no i have not I am a <laughs> tga fan collector i uh I am not worthy of this conversation anymore. <laughs> that, that is that is like when you put something into Google and you get zero results. There's an actual term for it. It's called Google whack. So it's dude. Wow. I'm not worthy. <laughs> we, we just Google whacked Dave, everybody. <laughs> awesome taller yeah the jacks cleaner too actually i got some of that across that i made with it got that in the jar here because this is this is just super lemon i mean the the cleaner the jacks cleaner too the lemon on it uh i've said it 
probably more times than people need to hear it, but the, the terpenes are so acidic. It eats the rubber seal on the top of your ball jar. Like it's that Jesus. lemony. <laughs> <of love. laughs> I love it. Sounds nice. That sounds yes. real nice. It's a good one. Definitely landed it to the Jack the Ripper too. That's, that's, yeah, that's super lemony. That's something that I've grown that uh, definitely has that in there, but it's yeah, good stuff. Nice. Well, let's see. Back to let me let me pull something out here. This is this is another something that uh, set my mailbox on fire. Thanks, Dave. <clears throat> um, <laughs> some Dutch Blooms work, the Dosi liquor. Oh, nice. And I'm kind of stoked on this one. Uh, so, what was this again? It was Dosi Doze and Dog Liquor. And, uh, uh, no, not dog, not dog well, liquor. It was, was Dosi Doze and Licorice Lime. Lick, ooh. That's Licorice yeah. lime. That Which sounds is, tasty. Uh, yes, it's lime vine, and oh my god, I can't remember the rest. There's too many. There's too many. <laughs> <laughs> too many. <laughs> well, I'm stoked. The, the dozy doze is, you know, usually that's something that's going to go a few more weeks, um, nine to eleven, from what mm -hmm. I understand. Uh, but that does kind of bring that like gassy profile uh, yep. to it. I had. Um, from Oregon, it's called duct tape, but it was a GG4 times a dosi do, and that's fucking awesome. Sure. Um, and it, it it wasn't uh you know fully GG4 leaning, like it definitely had influences from something else. I can only sure. assume that it was a dosi dose. So I'm kind of anxious to see what that does in this one definitely. as well. Because uh, he's he's been doing doing some good work, and you know, again, it's nice when you do see a lot of people running these out too. It's it almost is like uh, uh, people are running the preview for you. You're like, <laughs> e no, not the bud structure I'm after. <laughs> File in the maybe later category, <laughs> you know. And that's where testers come in handy too for uh, for the breeders, man. Absolutely, uh, having pictures of their work is pretty darn priceless to them so yeah if you're uh doing that for anybody make sure you send them pictures so a shooter i made duct tape times blr what's what's the blr in there shooter um but i know you're gonna know about the duct oh black line reserve God, yeah damn, i should have just asked dave <laughs> screw you alexa black, though. <laughs> <laughs> <You're right. laughs> Oh, uh, let's see. Mock in here. Uh, Tom McCormick doing some old school. Definitely doing the old school. Uh, yeah. You were talking or we were seeing, you know, the S. I saw the S1 on that Brothers Grimm there. Uh, and then James, we were talking about open pollination, just preserve projects earlier. That makes me think. So is Humboldt CSI the person that is doing a lot of the selfing, just kind of the seed increases with, you know, the blessing of you know, like the breeders who have these lines, who is that him or who is it out there that is, you know, getting all the nice stuff from breeders just so they could just run seed increases. I know he's definitely doing a lot of the work you're describing. Yeah. I don't know if that's specifically what it is, but uh, okay. I know he's definitely doing a lot of uh, feminized seeds, a lot of selfing of these yep. big name cuts, these high end uh, exclusive rarity, rare clones and making them available in feminized seed form for for people to use and he's definitely someone who has the right connections he's been doing this a long time inspector yeah. is someone you could trust definitely yeah nice yep humboldt csi and you know earlier i was telling the story about uh the the twin peaks and and uh how they came my way Thank you. <laughs> That's the guy. That's the guy. Thank you. you guys, just talking about Todd McCormick there, some authentic genetics. Yeah, yes, sir. Which one? Which ones did you pick up from him? Because he's had uh, uh, some of the. Let's see what's in classics. this one. Let's see what's in this container. Got NL number two. Oh, good pickup. Another one. Another NL number two. So is that? Uh, uh, are they five packs? Ten packs? 10 packs, 10 packs. You got a 10 pack of the NL number five, another of the NL number five. And then we've got, looks like an 11 pack of the skunk one. That was from this older, older package. Yeah. Another of the original Haze. Oh, nice. And I think there's like maybe 30 of them and 30 skunks in there. 
Wow. Now, has anybody, like, I haven't heard much about, like, germination rates or necessarily grow outs from some of these older seeds that he's been putting out lately. I don't know. Have you guys heard any feedback from that yet? Well, I know it's an increase that he's done. He's okay. basically take, taken these two F2. That's what a lot of these are. Mm -hmm. uh, older seed stock that uh, he had gotten his hands on a couple of years ago and popped them and has increased them and made his own crosses here and there. So I, I've, I've heard good things about the germination rates. Um, I know that he was trying to select towards the more accurate skunk, but skunk one is going to be a little sweeter to begin with, no matter what you do. Just okay. that's the way skunk man scam bred it for years. He selected yep. towards that. So it's, it's very, very difficult from, from what I've heard of people popping it, that they do send tend to lean more towards that skunk one older or that sweeter skunk one, as opposed to oh. the accurate that he was more hopeful for, but Hey, it is what it is. It's, it, yeah, it is what it is. That's a, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. And you never know it might, you know, it still might be buried in there and you just happen to pull, like we said, that lottery ticket. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's why that's why you've got two 10 packs. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. I mean, we we stacked we stacked for that. Um when I was when I was mentioning that I-95 project, I have stacked about 300 seeds to go through for that I-95 project to pick to pick winners off of because I was just like, look, you know, this is it's it's out here. I want to make something really extraordinary out of this. Let's go for it. Just to touch on that, you're running these uh, I-95, I, I can't wait to see what you get with that. Because uh, mm -hmm. anything that's touched that I've grown has been just a, a winner. It, it makes sour diesel grow beautifully, grow like a yeah. champ. It just has such sturdy, wonderful structure. It's the reason that Coca-Cola grows so much better than than the slushy beer, you know, mm -hmm. which has the, they're the same moms, but that I-95 being added to it just, oh, love it. I love it. So I can't wait to see what you, uh, what you get with that. What you Chad, do you notice how he's there. vying for a cut of whatever the winner is here? Is, is that, is that too apparent? Is he, is he subtle enough with that? Or, um... I, you know, you need me, you might need to pull my hair a little bit, but, uh, listen, uh, I got my knee pads ready guys. Yeah. <laughs> Dave's box is always open. That is something I know. <laughs> Mailbox, guys. Mailbox. 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 <laughs> uh, and, and I had an awesome transition there, and that just went out the window. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't even know what the what are we talking? What are we doing here? <laughs> Where am I? Where am I? Well, here is another wonderful gift from the man sitting on, on your screen there to the right. These were a blessing from him and open pollination. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Wonder. Oh wow! Yay. Nice. Old school super sativa seed club goodness right there with that Willie's Willie's Wonder. Yeah, yep. that was one of those man that um, I think it was honestly I think it might have been a charity auction that, that that somebody it may have been Nick it may have been somebody else put together like four of those packs whatever they had and they were just like they were just like okay you know what I'm gonna throw these up here. Um, they went really cheap and I was like, I'm not going to let, you know, I'm not going to turn down a hundred seeds of Williams wonder and see what happens with them. Um, but at the same time, like I'm probably not going to run that. That's the, that is like what I see as the perfect opportunity to be able to give those out to people who I know will appreciate them whenever they, they get to them. Um, and, you know, down the road, I'm sure I will get a message from, uh, from, you know, Dave, from, um, I, I think I've given away maybe another pack or two as well. And I, I know I'll hear back and hear what, you know, what all they found and if they found something really unique and, um, you know, they want to, they want to share it back or whatever else. I mean, that's just, it's, it's part of, it's part of being able to give and, and share in, in, in this community. So it's, it's always nice. See, he's got his knee pads ready too. <laughs> I knew that was coming back, man. I knew as soon as I started talking, I'm like, oh, shit, Dave's going to get me on this. Oh, God. I, I, I can't wait to see you two in the next auction together. That'll be fun. 
<laughs> you, you actually reminded me though when you said Nick, because uh, you know that that reminds me. Um, you know, Dave has been a pretty heavy collector of root beer, also of like kind of the Coca Cola stuff. Mm -hmm. um, where have you fallen in on that? Is that something that you've been actually collecting as um, well? So I have um, I have a few packs of the Coca Cola root beer stuff um, from uh, from Nick. Um, and then I, I do have, you know, the, the like original that, that they sent out the root beer, uh, that went out, um, and you know, was like all of it was, was done in like 10 seconds or whatever, when they, when skunk tech and, and, uh, and mean Jean sent it out together. Um, I also though, I have seen, um, right now we are actually running skunk tech's dome piece which is its headband it's a 707 headband cross to the root beer and Ooh. so um we are really curious to see what what comes of that because i grabbed a couple packs of that because i was really keen on um i i am a massive headband fan and especially you know that that cut came right from ben himself up at emerald mountain legacy such an amazing guy um, and so I was super keen on seeing what all developed from, from those. And, um, you know, we're right now it looks, they look absolutely beautiful. So, um, definitely a root beer fan. Um, didn't get as much into the Coca-Cola root beer not, not because I wasn't, you know, keen on that as well. It's just, there was just so many things to pick from for a while there that I just kind of, you know, I was like, <laughs> I'm going to grab a few things and from a few different places. And um, nice. I was also in a bit of a Bodhi buying phase at that point, I think. And I was never a bad thing. Bodhi under the sun. So <laughs> the, those are lovely, man. That's a person uh, who I, you know, love to talk to about genetics. I've never had a chance to meet him or talk to him or even run his gear for that matter. But uh, I've heard interviews that he's done. Seems like a really cool guy. Yeah. And again, you know, kind of like the, the, the strain we we're talking about earlier. I have never really heard anything bad about his genetics. Uh, people are always excited about what they can find. It's, you know, they never quite know exactly what to expect sometimes <laughs> other than good. Yeah. And yep. hey, what? I'm all for that. Yeah. Yeah, we wanted to do a project with the Goji OG stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So I went out and made sure that I like tracked down some, some you know, some packs of Goji OG and then also um, found the Heaven Mountain, which was it's, it's Goji OG cross to the App Appalachia. Uh, that and if if anyone gets a chance to try some Appalachia, that's the way to go. But oh, that's a really nice pack right there. Amen. I love that NL5 oil can. Yeah, that oh, oil can is the Woodman Canyon oil can. It sure is. Oh boy! Now we're playing there's with fire. Coming. There's more coming. <laughs> Black lambs. Nice root root pack root right there. Root beer. Okay, okay. Kentucky iced tea. Ooh. Oh, he used his summer's end for it. Cool, man. Now what? Uh, I haven't heard of the summer's end strain. Do you guys know much about that? Uh, so Summer's End is 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 uh, it, correct me if I'm wrong, Dave. I think it's candied lemons crossed to his. Um, is it crossed to Pam? I think. You got it. That is yeah. exactly what it is. Nice. Candied and Pam comes from Mr. Trees, right? Yes, it sure yes, it does. does. Okay. Same with his work. Uh, the work. It's yep. uh, the BLR Testarossa and Pam. That has made some really gorgeous plants. He's put out there to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a I have a pack of his uh, I have a double pack of his BLR Testarossa, just the just that from his from his collection that um, I, I would love the chance to run at some point just because it's uh, I have heard nothing but good things. What is B2? Oh, man. oh and it's a work 23. Wow. Very cool. Uh, you got Max Green Cola. Max 21 was uh from the original release of cap's uh mac i know he and cap are i know he he and cap are pretty tight i know they like each other so yeah. i i wouldn't be surprised to see some more work between the two of them at some point very true very true i'm trying to find my my pack of dome piece i got it here somewhere but you're oh. talking about it a minute ago <laughs> yeah i um we got some we got some dome piece uh in here um uh 
Got the the this was another one that I, I went and got a few of was the oh was the Giesel was the Giesel headband crown ripper. Um, nice. Because I'm I'm a huge Giesel fan. Um and then uh let's see. You got a few more packs of that, and then you got um oh the Vader Gator was his Death Star uh headband <laughs> um that he did. And then I like that name. Uh, I didn't have that one, man. I'm jealous. That's and then uh, let's see. Oh, and then I got some of his Nughead um, stuff, which is the Sour Diesel headband. Um, and then here's his dome piece right here, which is the, the GMO root beer headband. Um, yeah. And then uh, this was one that came from Gene and Skunk Tech, which was the Hollywood <laughs> Pure Kush headband. Of course, Gene's involved with that. Look at the picture. I know it's it's too good, man. And then these were actually so. Then then he sent me. Um, I, I have been fortunate enough to get to know Skunk fairly well, and and he's been very generous and kind to me over uh, the last year or so. And he sent me um, a Blue Mountain Gas cross the headband, um, a Day Wrecker cross the headband, which Day Wrecker is essentially original Diesel. Um, and then, uh, and then this one I'm really excited about is the, is the pure Kush cross the headband. Um, okay. so, uh, some, some cool, some cool work to run through from, uh, from skunk himself. Um, also have a bunch of his diesel cartel stuff, which is like the original diesel cross to the Cuban black haze. Um, so yeah, yeah. Just kind of, you know, went to town on, <laughs> on the skunk tech. Uh, it's not a bad decision at all. No, <laughs> not a bad decision. Uh, curious though, I see. I see that you keep them, you know, in ziplocs, which are good for keeping air out. Do you also use any kind of desiccants, or how do you store? Um, so I do seats? use. I do use um, uh, desiccants in everything. Um, typically, multiple packs in in each uh, bag. Um, I actually go ahead and in the bigger boxes that I have, um, I even keep like a hygrometer. <laughs> yep, exactly. Um, because uh, before I even really got into weed, I'm, I was a cigar smoker. So I, I knew all about the whole humidification thing. And so I was okay. like, okay, I'm going to make sure I keep this stuff really, really clean. And then I have a, I have a, um, a refrigerator down the basement that is solely my vault refrigerator of just uh, of all just seeds, nothing else. Um, and uh, uh, they've, you know, they've, they've been, they've been kept well. Do they go in and out of the fridge? Rarely. Rarely. On, yeah. on only like these occasions will I be taking them out too often. Um, I, I really like to keep them in a consistent environment. I don't usually like to like throw them around too much, but like for something like this where it's, Hey, it's a, you know, it's a few hours or whatever. I'm not, you know, I'm not too worried about it, but like, yeah, I definitely don't like just leave them out just cause I don't want to, I, you know, th that would be, that would be like the downfall right there is, you know, all of a sudden nothing's working and you're like, wait a second, did I kill the seed collection off? You know? oh, no. Well, there, there is, there is a little bit of a learning curve to it. Um, Definitely. You know, the 2010, 2011 area era, when I picked up those um, TGA seeds, I, that's kind of, I was working different things at that time. And I did a lot of like seed increases, not having the same knowledge I have today. And I still have a lot of those seeds, but the germination rate is something where it's just like, oh, ridiculous. Yeah. Like I have enough that if you want a couple, like, you know, F it, just throw 50 in a paper towel and see sure, if you sure. can tend to pop. Yeah. So, uh, but that's, that's fine. That's fun. That's older stuff. But, you know, storage is one of those questions you can really only answer with time. Yeah, <laughs> which is kind of the bitch about it. Yeah, oh, it is. It's absolutely you're absolutely right. There's no, there's nothing you can go off of otherwise except for testing them as you go. Um, and sometimes that's a, that's not a bad thing to do. Like just have an extra pack of something, throw them down if you can get them in the tent or whatever, and just see see what comes up, and just make sure that you're not all of a sudden like getting a bunch of dud packs of things. And right. um, 
we we had that happen with something um, not too Goodness. long ago where we were freaking out, thinking, "Oh my gosh, did we? You know, is our storage, you know, system not working or whatever else?" And it just unfortunately turned out that several packs of um, I think it was like the GG 4S ones from 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 GG strains or something like that. Okay. It was it was something where we were, where we were just like, huh, this is really strange that all of them, uh, and, and it was, it was across the board, like zero out of 10 popped. Right. They were all just duds. And so we were a little nervous at first. We were like, okay, is this, is this our fault? Did we just, you know, ruin all this, but no, it actually, it worked out. Okay. We, we, you know, popped a few other packs from the exact same box and those turned out perfect. So, you know, it, it happens sometimes and that's, that's kind of the risk you take, right? I mean, yeah. you know, sometimes the packs aren't going to be great and depending on who you're working with, some of them will maybe give you a pass and it'll be like, yeah, man, here, I'll send you another pack. Other, other people, they don't give a damn. Let's be honest. They're just like, Hey, I, you paid for it. You bought it. That's on you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's from what I've heard, it's been a toss up uh, yeah. as far as like levels of customer service. <laughs> uh, it seems there doesn't seem to be a middle ground. It's like either you get a, no. well, you suck rookie or like, Hey dude, here's another pack. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's a good way to put it. That's a really good way to put it. Oh, snaps. Um, damn, Dave. I feel inferior. This guy's beating me with the skunk tech collection. That that is not that is not at all true. That is not at all true. Let's let's hear you squirm for a little bit, Dave. Please, this is something we've not seen in <laughs> biggest in loser here. seven episodes. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, man! Looking at all these fancy, fresh from Skunk Tech cross. It's like, damn, man. That blue mountain gas headband. That should be amazing. By the way, I know you're excited about the pure fish headband. I'm yeah. telling you, that Blue Mountain Gas, that's the Sour D-I-95 I was yeah. uh, basically orgasming over before. <laughs> oh, my God. That's a bucket winner. Yeah. I, well, I mean, and see, that's what's so cool is, like, when I hear somebody get so excited about something that maybe I have, and if it is something that I want to run, then I, I'm going to make sure they get a cut of it. Like, I just, I'm not going to, I'm not going to hold it back and be like, nope, this is mine. And, you know, no one else gets any and blah, blah, blah. No, I mean, because I know Dave is, yeah, exactly. <laughs> because I know Dave is going to enjoy it and he's going to, you know, and he's, he's, he's going to be able to, to do some work with it. And, and so I, I would never keep that to, to myself if we grew it out and we were like, wow, this is some, you know, we really got a couple winners here. I'd much rather be able to throw it, you know, to a couple people and be like, hey, see what you, you know, see how this works for you. And, you know, let's let's see what happens, because um, it's as I said, it's just all about love. It's all about being able to share, man. I like hearing that cannabis is to be shared. Cannabis is to be enjoyed. One hundred percent, man. Yeah. That's awesome. And we had a, a, another question here that you might be able to answer. And it struck me because he says, you know, Thug Pug, the only respectable Michigan breeder, question mark. So he's looking for more. But my brain automatically, when I think of Michigan and breeders, Thug Pug is where it goes to. Mainly because of like, you know, the GMO or a lot of the breaths, actually, is what I'm thinking here. But they were popular for you guys for many years, many years. And then yeah. it hit the West coast and yeah. we were all about it. Mm -hmm. I looked into it and I'm like, this thing's eight years old over there. Yeah. So I don't know. Do, do you know of any uh, people that you enjoy that are um, in the Michigan well, area? I mean, yeah. I mean, first of all, we, we've been talking a lot about Lime Rising Farms there. That is, you know, Nick, Nick does some, some excellent work. Um, you know, he, he, he does it when he's able to, you know, so sometimes it's not like super um, available um, when, when he's, you know, able to, to, you know, put some things out there. Um, you know, Michigan grower wise, I mean, you have, you have fresh coast out there. Um, you have third coast genetics. Um, you know, the, the guys at gauge green finally split and went their own ways. Um, okay. And, and they're, to be honest, it's, it's, uh, the, messy. Um, the, the Michigan, <laughs> unfortunately, the Michigan environment went, it got, got pretty toxic and weird for a while with, with people stealing cuts from other people and stuff like that, not giving any sort of respect to one another. And, um, you know, honestly, the guy who really helped to create a lot of what is, you know, is staples in the, in the, the state of Michigan is, uh, uh, Hayes Man Seeds. And he's been around forever in the, in the thumb 
um, of the thumb of Michigan. Um, and yep, exactly, exactly. I, you know what? I think he's right up. Uh, he's right up, kind of here. Actually, I, I used um, to live in Holland over oh, here. Oh, beautiful place. <laughs> love, love going on weekends to Holland for sure. Um, and and so I, you know, he was the one that really came up with a lot of what we're seeing today as like stuff that Gage Green threw out there. Um, you know, I mean, remember just to give you a background, Thug Pug was a tester for Gage Green. Okay. Um, and so a lot of what he actually took was, was stuff that, that, that came from Gage Green, but then Gage Green had already taken it from Hayes, man, and, and no one had gotten the proper credit that they really deserved out of it. Okay. I, you know, I don't want to, I am not here to bash or to question other people's motives with their things. It's their own, you know, story and, and whatever else, um, I just know that it was kind of an odds. It was an unfortunate situation with some of that stuff. And it was kind of one of those things where people were racing to the top of the ladder. Um, and yeah. you know, they, they, some of it worked out really well. A lot of people went on a huge um, thug pug craze for a while. And then mm -hmm. um, now it's really died down and it's like bare minimum anymore. Like now people are just can't get rid of their packs fast enough. So um, I, you know, it was, it was kind of because he decided, he told everyone I'm going to retire and I'm going to be done. That's what and, I understood. And, yeah. then, and then all of a sudden he decided, no, nope, I'm now going to come out with all this stuff and wanted to make a big bank out of, out of it with his unicorn poop, um, yeah. you know, a new unicorn poop strain. Um, and I, it, it was just a, it was just a very odd move that unfortunately I think threw a lot of people off and made them go a different direction because they just felt like it was, it was kind of not, not the nicest and some unfortunate business tactics there. So it's the old, it's, it's the old Sriracha move. <laughs> Telling everybody they're discontinuing sriracha, so everybody <laughs> runs out and grabs it by the case. And yeah. two yeah. months later, it's back. It's right there. It's you know, right I've there got for four everyone cases to see. Of sriracha sauce. Yeah. <laughs> what am I going to do with that, man? Yeah, they did it with Twinkies. They're doing it with Choco Taco right now. Yeah, yeah. Toys R Us is coming back. Are they really? Yeah, they. I think they opened up nine stores. I think it's like inside of. <laughs> we're so off topic, but yeah, <laughs> Toys R Us is coming back recognize no well, you it's, mentioned it's, fresh coast I, I recently put up a blind bid at an auction i didn't even realize what was up there and a bunch of fresh coast bags came with it oh nice oh so michigan obviously i recognize yep. that they're from michigan as well what uh what did you pick up there wow you got, oh, you got, got quite a few you got truffle shuffle Yay, that's a Goonie thing. You got to be from Ooh. Oregon to call it Truffle Shuffle. I'm sorry, but I'm calling it Fresh Coast. <laughs> Garlic Grove. So Ooh, when, we're talking about, when we're talking about uh, um, belief for a second there, you know, mm -hmm. belief's main thing came from that white, that white truffle cut that he did. Yeah. The white truffle actually came from Fresh Coast Gorilla Butter. Okay. So it actually does go back to I had an original pack of it that a friend of mine really, really wanted. So I I, I gave it to him um, to be able to run and enjoy. Uh, but they, they um, you know, he has he has put his stamp on things. And I mean, Dave, those you got some you got some good stuff right there, man. I love watching you two make each other squirm. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 what's that? What's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I'm pulling it, and mine's just an inch further. You got an extra inch on this one. <laughs> He's stepping on it. Doesn't count. Too funny, I'm man. so embarrassed of my lack of a skunk tech collection compared to his, you know. <laughs> this this coming from the guy that gets all the right cuts from skunk tech but doesn't have the seeds he's he's just broken hearted about it though <laughs> he skips he skips all the he skips the line just, well, he, just does. he the skips plan, the line man. so it's like it's like well now now dave let's come clean here come on <laughs> you're not wrong I'm, I'm sitting next to some uh texas shoreline headband and oh. some uh, skunk tech sour diesel Damn. So I saw that mentioned earlier in chat and I was going to bring that up, but they were talking about the Texas shoreline. That's something that I've heard people searching for hunting for again. Uh, what was it about that? Like, what is the profile? Is it strength? Is it terpenes? What? I don't know much about the, the Texas shoreline. 
I'll, I'll let you go. I'll let you go. I mean, Texas Shoreline was just was was one of the um, you know it was it was kind of a, a a regional thing that they really thought mimicked a lot of what we saw with Roadkill Skunk, and okay. so people ran with that. And um, I, I I don't know. There's been a lot of people who and and Dave could probably add much more detail to this, but there's been a lot of people who aren't sure if they're getting the real thing, if it's a you know if it's an iffy thing. You know, Skunk Tech has always been you know, very verifiable with everything that he does. I mean, he kind of prides himself on that. So anything that he says, I, I would, I, I would obviously put faith in it. I, I know though that it's been like, you know, just kind of one of those things where it's just not quite sure. Cause it's an older, it's, it's a, you know, pretty old strain there. So I'm not sure exactly what the, um, you know, what people uh, think about it outside of maybe like the, the one that skunk tech has, but Dave, maybe you can say more on it you pretty much nailed it. I mean, it, it is something that is elusive. Not a lot of people would have the real cut because it was such a tightly held cut in Texas and mm -hmm. that whole region in general. So like, like you, like you said, it, it definitely was said to be a very skunk oriented pheno, a very, a very skunk smelling reminder of that, that old school flavor. And like you said, uh, you hope that uh, that Skunk Tech has the real stuff. And anything, anytime I've dealt, you know, I do trust. Uh, I'll, stop, I'll stop myself. I do trust yeah. what he says and what he has. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. I've never run it myself. I've only heard about it. So I was just kind of, uh, hey, I'll try that. If yeah. You, if you say it's real, I'll try it. Yeah. Well, you know, again, that is kind of another benefit. Um, like we started the show out with, you know, the Mean Gene uh, and the Runts uh cross that i have it's like you know i known he's he grew it out and he's going to be a pretty good character judge of the strain and i'm assuming you know skunk tech uh you know ha has grown this out and is like yeah okay you know it's it's very likely uh if not absolutely the the one so that does go a long way <clears throat> with people yeah but that would be nice to nice to see another uh skunk smelly skunk leaning strain seeing the light of day texas sounds just like a crazy place to have been growing anyways so i don't doubt things were pretty secretive and held <laughs> tightly down there man texas don't play no so we got we got about 10 minutes left here uh because i like to try to keep it at two hours um you know actually both of you guys are uh on a much later time zone than I am. So I want to be respected of your time. Could talk uh, about this stuff all day. It, it's, you know, <laughs> I know it, it, it's easy. Is it, it's kind of amazing where you do, you like look up and you're like, it's been an hour and 50 minutes already. <laughs> Holy <laughs> Nikes. I still, I had five things to show and I've got three left. <laughs> so, what is that? I mean, you guys have been doing a great job tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Well, why don't you show us something you got, man? Yeah. Well, th this one's an unreleased one. This one's something I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. um, Boneyard Seeds, Mr. Toad. Awesome. Yeah. It's, uh, his Chem D. He is another person that found out that I love the chems, and he sent me a Chem D, a Chem 4, a Chem 91 crosses. Um, cool. But particularly stoked about this one because it's crossed with his Mudbone. Um, okay. Mudbone, and I'll have to look it up here. It, it is on the seedfinder.eu uh site if anybody wants the lineage on that one but this one he has said is particularly medicinal and he had worked with uh, a collective and you know thousands of patients in the past and he was really kind of you know exp exploring strains and this was one of the strains that a lot of people had like benefits from so to have that crossed into a chem i'm kind of stoked for that so the, this was on the uh, the front of the list as well, as far as getting popped. And this was a, an unreleased one for now. Um, it might be getting released, but I found out that even Cheddar Bob doesn't have it. So, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Because Cheddar Bob gets everything. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> he does, he does. Yeah. Um, another another one that I got in that in that uh, group was this. I'm pretty stoked about this one. The one hitter quitter, which yes. uh, is going to be strong. It's the Star Dog, yep. uh, Corey. So the Corey Haim cut. I'm assuming this is from Top Dog Seeds. It is the original man. Yep. Times uh, his uh, times Mr. Toad Space Cheese, which uh, I recently ran his Space Cheese times the RKS, which I believe was the RKS. 
uh, that he got from Todd McCormick. Okay. So I just ran that cross. And then the other one, uh, the last one that I had here was uh, the backpack, the black wop fruit times space cheese. Wow. And uh, was the black wop fruit, was that Dutch blooms? Come on. Yes, it is. Okay. So nice. Okay, I give up. But <laughs> those were what I've received since the last uh, Seed Collectors episode. And, you know, they're they're cutting the line again. So, yep, <laughs> that, that's what I got for you guys. Those, those are some solid seeds right there. That is a He is a really good guy. And I know he's done a lot with the, the medical community, which I uh, is obviously very near and dear to my heart. So mm -hmm. I, I love seeing his stuff out there. I was at the... The Regen conference that um, uh, that that Josh Dutch Blooms put put on, and 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 Nick obviously helped with here in Michigan, and uh, uh, they had some of his stuff over there as well. And um, I made sure he had he had some Death Star crosses over there. That was the um, one of the 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 you know, original Death Star cuts that I was really curious about. And I saw it with the cheese and I was like, oh, that's going to be, that's going to be something real mean right there. If you put those two together, that's going to blow your face off. <laughs> I will never forget watching Kevin Jodry pass out smoking Death Star. He's sitting there slumped like this in a chair and, and literally no one can wake him up. We, people were sitting around him like what the what the hell just happened to a guy who's like a pioneer of, of of marijuana right there and he could not get up for the life of him it was the highlight of uh of the regen conference yeah that's that's not one you expect to see no, no like, not man, at all. it's like damn if you weren't if you weren't so cool and as buff it'd be great if i had a sharpie right now but no i'm not going there <laughs> If you have your shoes on, it's fair game. That that's how I was brought up, man. If you're sleeping with your shoes on, you passed out and you deserve it. And that that Corey Hay man, Star Dog is is one of the absolute best uh, um, strains out there. I, I truly believe it's it's it, it is absolutely second to none in its own class in a lot of ways. And I have smoked some wonderful star dog over the years. Um, and we're actually going to do a project for star dog stuff as well, because we have some really early 25, late 2015, early 2016 stock, um, of, of seeds and, uh, probably like about 80 to a hundred. And so we're going to go ahead and, and run those, um, and see what we can come up with star dog wise as well. So, so we'll see. That's pretty, that'd be pretty already. <laughs> looking up oh they don't have space cheese listed here i'm looking on the seed finders website um somebody had put up the the mud bone cross in the chat and somebody else had asked what the cross of the um space cheese was oh okay and i, I was looking up here at mr toad stuff on here but this was the um mud bone uh, use Angel. Angel is actually that Mr. Nice that I had over there. I have his original stock Angel as well. Nice. Yeah, wow. So that is a gorgeous, super medicinal strain right there. And, and the Kush is for me, like I have a lot of um, just like kind of stomach issues, mm -hmm. um, like Bubba Kush, Burmese Kush. They both like they chill my stomach the F out. So. Knowing awesome. that it was a part of it, I'm like, yeah, I totally already am interested in, you know, the medicinal potential of that. So, yeah, this this one had me really excited because, again, you know, I, I, I view the plant as medicine and uh, that's what I'm after. So uh, that'll be fun to try. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Yep. And and I can ask him what the uh, space cheese is or you can actually hit him up, too. He's yeah. uh, on Instagram. Yeah, I'll have to ask him. I'm not sure what it is, but I, I saw the same thing when I was over at that Regen conference. And I'm like, space cheese sounds sounds good somehow, you know, with a Death Star. So I'm 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 getting a lot of let's go to outer space with this stuff. So I'm I'm, I'm good with that. <laughs> totally. I'm good with that. <laughs> well said. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Well. <laughs> How about Dave? I don't know. Do you guys want to? You guys want to throw up maybe one more pack uh, and one more one more story before we head out for this, uh, sure. this session? Why not? Well, the pack that I want to throw out there is uh, the most recent battle I had with uh, James over here. 
Uh oh. <laughs> oh god. This this is Pure this kush. is sky oh, yeah. double kush. Yeah. This is uh from it was a recent auction to, to benefit Nick or uh, Lime Rising Farms, and he had he happens to get some special stuff in, in his possession and he got some pure kush sky color double kush direct from Mean Gene himself and Wow, that, that's, that was what the fight was for. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's it's not in the uh, Mean Gene fancy packaging with his own special handwriting, which you know it's like gold. Yeah, it's right. it's, it's better with the it's better with the little packs and the handwriting. Let's be honest. Yeah, oh yeah. The, if, it, if, it, if it looked like that, it, it's just delicious. But uh, it's okay. I, I know what I know what it is, so we're okay. There you go. <laughs> this is this is like my the, this is my one chance at the Jerry Springer moment that I promised at the beginning of the episode. Like I wish we could get your face on here, uh, Dave, so you could just be like, "Oh yes, look at this little pack. Oh, isn't it just the greatest? Oh, you're so cute. Look at you." <laughs> But that would require me wearing like a shirt right now. That's not. Oh, it. see, that's yeah, too that's hot. that's just, that's too much. That's too much for Dave. Yes, I was told the other day by Dave it's too hot for leather. So hell, you know, it's <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> oh man, was that private, dude? I'm yeah, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Nobody watches this show, anyways. Nobody watches, dude. We're all good. We're all good. Just, we didn't we didn't say what kind of leather, so we're good. We kept that out of things here. And, and now that I've taken it that route, James, no. Do you, do okay, you here we go. It's coming off. <laughs> da, da, da. Do you have one more pack that I, you'd yeah, like I, to share? I do, off? actually. I have um, a couple things that are kind of fun to share here. Um, yeah. Is some old uh, Bob Hemphill uh, um, crickets and cicada stuff, actually, Ooh, that, uh, um, that, that might be fun to see. So we got some Silk Road. Um, we have some purple Hindu Kush crossed with Cabo Kush. Um, we got the Nepali hash plant crossed with the puck. Um, and then some red Lebanese hash plant crossed with the puck. And um, then the puck back cross. Um, so um, his, you know, one of the things that we do a lot of also is we do a ton of preservation, land race, heirloom genetics. We go through, um, I just got a whole bunch of Kashmir Assad um, and Jalalabad star uh, work that we're going to run through. Um, so between that and like some of his Pakistani Peshawar um, stuff that Bodhi um, okayed for, for, uh, for Graham to run is... Um, you know, that kind of stuff we, we love to work through because there is so much that if you find the right, the right phenos, you know, it's it, same with, same with a guy like Snow High, for example, out your way, um, who's just a phenomenal guy as well. Those are, those are areas where we can really transform and take the direction of what is, you know, very popular and be able to, to really, you know, um, evolve and complement those strains that people are really enjoying by adding in these these really unique cannabinoid profiles from these very unique regions that are hard to get your hands on. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Like uh, J J Two Cans had just put up a, a pack for sale that was the the uh, the brothers of uh, uh, the B O E L. Um, uh, 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 BOEL pre-Soviet Afghani, and we have a few packs of those to run as well. There you go. That's what I'm talking about, Dave. I'm gonna finally get this right. That's the Snow High logo. Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Oh, those are some awesome things. But yeah, J uh, Joey or J Two Can. I, I just always want to say Joey or Jimmy. <laughs> J Two Cans. He. Uh, we actually did a breeder profile uh, with him on oh, nice. FCPO two. Uh, Actually, it was uh, me, Mr. Toad, and him. Nice. So, uh oh. So, dun, 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 dun. I couldn't help dun. myself. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Winner! <laughs> I told you he's got me beat. No, you he's can just tell that he and I are just, we are, we are one mind when it comes to what is good out there. And I take so many tips from, from watching Dave's work and stuff that I, it, we, we, you know, it's, it's, it's awesome to have people like him to be able to, to, you know, bounce ideas off of and learn from and evolve, you know, our genetics along the way. So 
you know, it's, it's, it works out perfectly on both ends. Yeah. This, this has been I rad. You, I love you too. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> Especially shirtless. <laughs> <laughs> And with a broken keyboard. That's true. That's true. <laughs> sure. Listen, no, no keyboard. Dave, you are a god. Indeed. Oh, rad. Um, you know, before we close it out, I'd just like to uh, give both of you guys a chance to, uh, you know, shout yourselves out, um, tell people where they can find you if you'd like, and, you know, give a shout out to anybody uh, if you feel so inclined. Um, but let's go ahead and do that before we wrap it up. Um, Dave, you're the senior. I'll let you go last. We'll, we'll, we'll get James in here first. Uh, so please, man, let people know where they can find you. Yeah. So, um, always, you know, you, you can find us on Instagram, um, at joint cultivation. Um, we are really active on our Instagram. Um, we also have a website that we're working right now on an educational blog series, actually. So we're, we're getting into, um, a lot of uh, kind of some of the nitty gritty stuff that we talked about here this evening, talking about different phenotypes, what that means, um, some open pollination ideas, what is craft cannabis and why is there such a market for it? Um, you know, we, we really kind of dial in a lot of that um, as well as sustainable farming. Um, we talk at length about that as well. Um, so you can hit us up on our website. Um, and we have most of our contact details and stuff on there. We would love to be able to interface and talk with with anybody and continue to grow our um, continue to grow our brand and and uh, um, continue to to you know work and and meet a lot of amazing people like yourselves. Um, so uh, yeah, I think I think I've probably touched on everybody this evening. Um, but uh, and shout out to my 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 business and grow partner um, Colton, who if you go on our web or on our website or our IG page, he's right on there, and he is a uh, a, a grower wizard. Um, the other member of our family is if you go to uh, T Bonds on uh, uh, on Instagram. Tim is a uh, part of the joint family as well, and um, uh, he is just an amazing guy, the hardest working person I've ever met. So, um, so yeah, and I just can't thank you enough for having me on. This was this was an absolute yeah. riot. I would love to do it again sometime and sit here and just just you know, goof around with you guys. It's, it's, it's a blast. So thank you. Dude, the pleasure has been all mine. Uh, it, it's been a fun one. It, it's great to meet you. And yeah, we're, we're definitely not done talking. No, no we're, we're, we're going to do not. this again. Yeah. And, and both your uh, Instagram and website is down in the show notes. So anybody who just wants to easily click on it, boom, awesome. just go to the, the, you know, the show more click that it'll have the Instagram and the website there linked for you. And you reminded me, uh, I'm going to give one shout out to, we were talking Michigan breeders earlier. Um, I want to shout out Smiley's garden. Uh, he does Smiley's angels yep. is some of the work, uh, that he's been putting out lately and good dude. So always support that in the conversation of Michigan breeders. So I just want to put that one out there. Um, but go ahead, Dave. Uh, I got your Instagram down in the show notes too. But <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. I just want to. I just want to say. Uh, first off, you had mentioned the the, the Bob Hempel the, that Jimmy Toucan's put up. Uh, I'm the one who uh, the proud owner of that. That'll be coming my way very soon. Oh, very uh, nice, man. Very, we'll very excited to get those. See, we got a couple packs over here. We combine those with that one, man. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna find something real special. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And the second thing you were asking what space cheese was, that's blue cheese and angel. Okay. Oh, nice. Thank nice. you. Okay. Blue cheese and angel. And th thirdly, uh, Dave's not here on Instagram and you can find it on the bottom, the, uh, the bottom you know, of the, the YouTube there. You can find it. If you go on Instagram and search Dave underscores, not here with a Z. Uh, I'm on discord too. Dave's vault. Find me. Nice. <laughs> find me. Yeah. No, awesome, Dave. Thank you again for coming and hanging out and having such a beautiful freaking collection and being able to share and talk and explain a lot of this stuff with us. Um, you know, I, I definitely look to you for a lot of the things that are going on and to educate myself. And I think a lot of people in chat as well appreciate that. So thank you, dude. Thank you for being here every single show. <laughs> 
thank you for always having me. I don't know how I haven't worn out my welcome yet, but I appreciate that uh, it, it's I'm still here. Keep sending the leather pics, buddy. <laughs> And with that, that we will to end wrap it, man. up the show. Everybody in chat, you guys have kicked ass tonight. Thank you so much. The conversation has been fun. We do this every month, so we will see you next time. And until then, be well and have fun. Take I'll it see you later. Later.